I will jump in. I'm super excited to talk with you all today. Um, and uh, I hope uh, my internet holds out and does a great job. Uh, but just in case I did, I had one of those unfortunate things where Comcast texted and said, hey, we're doing work in your area. So <laughs> if uh, my internet, internet gets a little wobbly, I'll probably turn off my uh, camera. Um, but for now, we're, it, lo it looks good. So uh, I'm going to take the advantage of this while I can. Um, so just give everybody a couple more minutes to get logged in. Um, and again, super excited to share this topic with you today. Because um, I love talking about caregiver recruiting. And I'm sure you all do too. That's why you're here. I have no doubt. Um, cool. Uh, well, it looks like we're starting to get some critical mass here. So I'm going to jump in and start uh, start in with this session. So um, I'm calling this the Home Care Operators Classroom on how to attract top caregiver talent. Um, we're going to cover a lot of stuff today. I'm going to try and keep it to our, our time frame, um, but super excited to, to talk with you all about this. So if you're not familiar with Augusta, I'm going to talk about that at the end. Uh, but Augusta is the first caregiver applicant matching system. Uh, we help our customers uh, increase their billable hours by getting more interviews with applicants. We do that because we're, as far as I know, the only company out there that developed a way to actually effectively rank applicants by gathering a huge amount of data on them, much more than anybody else out there. And we speed the time to uh, to interview. Um, so that's the general idea about us. I'm just a, a Zoom instruction here, just in case anybody hasn't been on a Zoom recently. I know you have, I know you have. Um, but uh, the uh, question and answer button in your Zoom bar, uh, feel free at any point, throw in questions there and I will get to them as soon as I can. Um, don't hesitate to do it as I'm uh, talking. So, and I am uh, recording this webinar, of course. I'm gonna have it up on our uh, website a couple days after and I'll email it out to everybody in case you wanna share it with somebody else. Okay, so here's what's on the agenda today. In brief, I'm going to talk about marketing your agency to caregivers, optimizing your hiring process, and qualifying applicants effectively. If you stay at the end for about five minutes, I'll share more about Augusta. Um, and I'm Jen. Hi. Nice to meet you all. Um, unless I already know you, which I probably do know some of the people on here already. So welcome back. Um, I... Uh, actually started in this industry in 2009 as a caregiver. That was my very first job um, after college. So worked in a memory care community for two years. And that's what made me super passionate about this industry and uh, figuring out ways that we can improve the quality of the job for caregivers, improve the quality of care that older adults are receiving, and uh, improve uh, home care agencies' businesses uh, at the same time. So. Um, uh, after that, worked for two different online caregiver training companies, and um, I mentioned my dog here because, who knows, she might make an appearance on this, uh, this meeting today. So um, hopefully she stays quiet, but uh, she's in the background there, so, um, and love playing music too. Just some fun facts. Okay, so now I'm going to get into it. Um, I can already hear my lovely dog barking. She's so sweet. Um, okay, so I know you're probably seeing this picture right now of a galaxy and you're like, what is Jen trying to do right now? Like, what is she talking about? But I promise this relates, okay? And I thought of this like analogy one night right before I fell asleep and I was like, oh, I gotta use that. Okay, so prior to 2009, humans had only identified about 500 planets in other solar systems. So we're sitting here on Earth thinking, yeah, there's probably about 500 other planets out there. And then in 2009, we launched what they called the Kepler telescope, and it used a new way to identify planets. So what they realized they could do is actually measure whether or not there was another object in the sky based on whether or not the star in front of it dimmed 
when it passed. So all they did was think of a new way to identify, oh, there's a planet up there. And then all of a sudden, we at that point in 2009, we're like, oh, wow, there's at least 2,600 other planets out there in other solar systems. And now today, this picture that I'm showing on the screen is from the James Webb telescope, which is really cool if you haven't checked out those pictures. Um, but today we know that there's at least 5,500 other planets in other solar systems. So all we did is figure out a new way to measure, basically, what we were looking for. And then all of a sudden, thousands of new discoveries. Right? Isn't that cool? I think it's really cool. I'm a big nerd. Um, but my point is, and how this even at all relates to caregiver recruiting, is that there are thousands of facets to marketing. <laughs> and it really is just about how you measure it, basically, and what you're measuring. That's that's the the end of it, essentially. Is marketing is uh, caregiver recruiting is sales and marketing, and, sale, and sales and marketing is measurement. And it's what you're measuring and what you're identifying as a positive and a negative and uh, what's important to you and what's important to the other person. That's pretty much it. So really big analogy. Hope it gets your juices flowing and just gets you thinking about something else out there. Um, because there are so many other planets and other solar systems and other facets to marketing. What I'm going to really focus on, on today are just a couple of the three of uh, the seven P's of marketing. I'm just going to introduce that topic just in case nobody you're not familiar with it yet. It's a pretty like kind of like standard way to uh, conceptualize your marketing systems and how they all work together. Um, but I thought I'd, it's a helpful frame, framework if you're not familiar with it yet to just kind of like think about, okay, these are the main pieces of marketing. And what I'm going to talk about are these three that I uh, put in red here. So the seven P's of marketing applied to caregiver recruiting. The seven P's, they're basically ingredients, and they're all dependent on each other, and they're interrelated. And you just can't have one without the other. For instance, uh, you can't have a product that you're selling, that you're actually selling, without having a price, right? There's something that somebody's paying for it. So it's all related, interdependent. So I'm just going to go over these seven things real quick um, and then spend all of our time focusing on the three that I um, uh, put in red here. So the price applied to caregiver recruiting is how much is your ideal caregiver willing to work for? The product is what does the job actually consist of? The placement is where you're advertising the job. Promotion is how you communicate what you do and what the job is to your target hire. So it's really that process of explaining. Um, and that's where there's a lot of data to think about. So that's what I'm going to spend a lot of our time on. The next uh, two are the process, which is what is the actual experience of somebody who gets hired at your company? The physical evidence is what does your target hire see in the process of getting hired? Like what is the... Uh, what are the proof points that they literally see to help them understand that this is a legitimate opportunity? Um, and then who are the people? Uh, the people are literally everyone who comes in contact with your caregiver marketing, caregiver sales and recruitment process, um, and the people doing the interviewing and onboarding the people. So obviously there's like about a million things. Um, so all I'm gonna do is uh, spend time on these three. So let me start with uh, promotion. So how do you promote to caregivers? First off, you're selling a job as a caregiver, right? So it's job as a caregiver. Um, yes, and it's so, so, so much more. It's not even just being a caregiver. You know from, I'm sure from your own experience in the industry, this is an incredibly emotionally rewarding job that a lot of people aren't doing for the money. They do it because they love being a caregiver. Right. So it's the job is a caregiver, but it's so much more than that. And what's really, really important here and why marketing is so data driven is because being a caregiver to one person means something very different than it does to another person. It's so much more valuable to some people than it is to others. And the same thing goes on your end, too. Right. 
there's certain caregivers that are much more valuable to you than they are to somebody else, right? If you have a really strong need for a weekend caregiver in that in a specific town right now, that person is really valuable in comparison to somebody else who's brand new to the industry and lives 20 miles away. So there's always this balance, right, of what's valuable to them, what's valuable to you. So this is where you really need to think about who am I actually selling to? Who is my ideal caregiver? Um, and why? And what are the problems that I can actually help them solve? Right? Because that's the that's the whole rub of this here is it's important to one person, but it's not important to the other person. So what are the problems of the people who are applying to jobs today that you can actually solve with your job? Okay. So to answer that question of what are the problems that caregivers want solved, I'm going to share a whole bunch of data from Augusta. So as I said at the beginning, if you're not familiar with Augusta yet, we developed the only caregiver applicant matching system uh, on the market today, which boosts interview show-ups and first phone screens by evaluating applicants on 20 home care specific criteria and geolocating them to both your agency, your service area, and your zip codes, basically, um, of your service area. So we've gotten 250,000 applicants to complete a set of 20 questions that are all home care specific. And we get 95% of these people to, uh, to complete all 20 questions. So we've got this giant data set on who is in the market today and what are they looking for? Um, and just as a side note, the way we're capturing all these applicants is that our software integrates with uh, job boards and it's used with a QR code in person. Basically, anywhere that you could be advertising for a job, applicants are, are getting processed through Augusta to learn more about the job and uh, also schedule interviews. So that's where our data is coming from. So that way you know uh, it's from Indeed, it's from Craigslist, it's from our customers' websites, it's from people applying in person or on the phone. It's literally like from anywhere that an applicant is applying, um, they're uh, getting processed through Augusta um, and we're collecting this standardized set of data on uh, all these applicants. So that's how we know the, 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 the facts that we have. Um, and the reason why it's all happening, that's different, but I'm going to share the data, the raw data, right? So that way you can kind of come to some of your own conclusions and see how it relates to your experience. So how many experienced caregivers are applying to jobs right now? Not a lot, which it's just, it is what it is, right? This is just data. And all it's telling you is that they're really, if, if your agency in the past, your main thought has been, I need to market in a way that is going to capture all the experienced caregivers, you've, you've uh, already cut out the majority of applicants that are looking for home care jobs today. So I'm not saying you were doing something wrong. I totally understand the impetus and the reason why you would want to do that, right? But that type of marketing actually doesn't align with the people that are looking to work at a home care agency today. So wh who is looking to work at a home care agency today are people who are new to the industry and they've cared for friends and family. So that's 73% of 250,000 applicants have cared for friends and family and are looking to uh, start a new career as a caregiver. Um, so it's just a data point, right? It means, and like I said, all it means is that if today when you're marketing to applicants, you are specifically marketing to experienced caregivers, that part of those 73% of people are probably already thinking that they're not a good fit for your job. Okay. And that could be that what you need to do in your business, and that's fine. It's just, that's the perception, uh, if you're only marketing to experienced caregivers. Okay, so very similarly, it goes uh, very much along the same lines here. Um, how many applicants are already registered or certified? Um, I know not every state has any registration or certification process, but 
This data is based on the states where there is a registration or certification process. 65% of people are not registered. They're not certified at all. So it very much goes along with the um, data that we know that people who are applying to home care jobs today have cared for friends and family. They're pretty new to the industry. One of the questions that we ask applicants is what role they're interested in and what they're looking for and what they're, uh, so this is, uh, there's a lot of different combinations that caregivers might fill out in here. Some people say, oh yeah, I'm looking to do personal care. Oh, I'm looking to do living care or I could do both, right? So there's a lot of different ways to break down this data. But the one point that I isolated that was really, I think very meaningful is that 17% of 250,000 people want to do just companion care. Right. And so I know that's like, OK, that's like a tough problem to solve. Right. But the what I'm trying to say here is that this is a big part of who's in the market right now. So if you're uh, again, this goes back to if you're advertising just to try and capture only capture people who already have experience, there's probably 17 percent of people who think, oh, this job just isn't for me. I wouldn't even apply to it. Like, I'm not even going to try because, like, it's not relevant, right? But there are a ton of people out there who want to learn. So that's what this data is saying. Okay, so another question that we ask uh, applicants is what benefit is important to them. Um, and I think maybe surprising to a lot of people the number one thing, and again, out of 250,000 people, so this is a really statistically significant data set, right? This is a lot of data. 50% of people want flexible hours. That's the first thing on their mind. Um, after that, you can see here, overtime pay, easy commute, and health insurance are pretty much equal. Like, I mean, there's a little bit of variation, but not that much. Um, flexible hours by far, is the most important. And I'm sure, and if you think about it, it kind of makes sense with who we think of as a lot of, I think a lot of people's uh, conceptions of who's in the market today, um, a lot of, or, or who is a caregiver today. A lot of caregivers are caregivers at home. They've cared for friends and family. They may not have been a professional caregiver, but they've cared for friends and family. They are relatively new to the industry. They're thinking about caregiving as companion care. They probably don't know that companion care is really just one tiny little part of caregiving, right? But they've got all these own of their own responsibilities that they're dealing with every single day. And so flexible hours to them is really important because they probably have to be able to go pick up their kids at school when they're sick. You know, they've got a whole bunch of other host of responsibilities as we all do, but it's really important data to know that that's the number one benefit that they're asking for, right? So out of all these people in the market, you may, whether or not you wanna hire them, that's a separate question, but what people in the market are asking for um, and what they're interested in is flexible hours. Okay, I know I've, I've done a lot of talking here, so feel free to use that Q and A if you have any questions, I'm happy to pause and, uh, and take those. Next up, and perhaps the most difficult of all the data points to uh, to think about is out of all these 250,000 applicants, only 46% of the applicants, so less than half of the applicants, live within 15 miles of your service area. But you, as the home care agency, 71% um, of your hires live within 15 miles of the agency. So this is actually probably the biggest, one of the biggest mismatches of what's happening in the market today versus what is important to your applicants. They, you very, very much want to hire people who live like right within your service area and applicants are not applying to jobs that are in their service area. Basically, I know that's like it's a it's it's kind of a puzzler, right? We have a lot of other data that's um, demonstrating why that's happening, um, but I'm not going to go into all that today. Happy to talk with you about it uh, after this if you're curious. Um, 
But that is a huge mismatch between what applicants are uh, uh, applying to and what you're looking for, right? So that's a problem that needs to get solved. And marketing is uh, marketing, uh, promotion, and your process is uh, uh, are all potential solutions to that. Okay, so summary here: Who are you promoting to, and what problems can you actually solve of theirs? So applicants are probably family caregivers, and they're probably not certified in your state. There's going to be a sizable group who only want to do companion care, and they really need education about the industry. Because if they applied saying, "I just want to do companion care," they probably they are probably brand new to the industry, right? Um, they want flexible hours more than anything else, way above and beyond any other benefit. Um, but in equal, pretty much in equal measure, they want overtime uh, health insurance and an easy commute. But from a, just a sheer numbers perspective of like total volume of people who could potentially be a fit for your agency, the hardest criteria to actually fill is probably the location of the applicant in relation to your service area. Because caregivers are just not applying to companies in the right service area for them. So these are all problems that do definitely have solutions. Um, and what you can think about here is if you can't always, you can't necessarily compete on every single problem that they have and what you're trying to solve. Um, but there are some of these things that really do have concrete solutions if you're willing to do it. And what I would say is also that I, I'm going to make some examples here of how you can promote to caregivers using all this data. So I've got some actual concrete examples of headlines that you could use. Um, but that said, you will also need to then think about, okay, how am I going to process these applicants later? Because I know a lot of agencies out there, they do, their marketing today is mostly geared towards experienced caregivers. But we know that as the data shows, that's cutting out the majority of the people who are in the market actually looking to do these, to, to work as a caregiver. So then it makes you consider, okay, what are the solutions that we want to put in place at our company um, to capture more of those people? It's not necessarily that you're going to hire all of them, but more so that you can weed them out further in your process, which I'll talk about the process next, right? So, but the, I mean, the idea of a marketing funnel or a marketing flywheel, however you conceive of it, is that it's as wide as possible. You're capturing as many possible people as you can who, where you can solve their base problem and meet your base criteria. So we're talking about the lowest common denominator and the marketing wow. level, right? Um, so rather than excluding all of these people that we know are looking to be a caregiver in the market and who have just started as a family, have been a family caregiver in the past, you're probably better off welcoming them and then in your process later weeding them out, right? Um, so here are some examples of how all of this data could shape your promotion. So these are examples of potential taglines for uh, job descriptions. I would uh, not necessarily not use these as job titles. Um, that's something different and has more to do with the job board and how the job is listed. But in your job description, first line that the caregiver sees. Um, calling all family caregivers. You love caring for your friends and family. You're ready to use those skills and turn them into a healthcare career. Let us help you on your journey. So it's specifically talking to this 71% of people that are already applying to this job. Get them into your hiring funnel and weed them out after, right? Um, if they're not going to be a good fit for some other reason. But as long as you have a training program, which I think most agencies today do have some sort of training program for somebody who's new to the industry, um, then you should be capturing those people and why not market them directly because that's who's applying to these jobs anyways, right? Um, okay, next one is you love spending time with your grandma and cooking her favorite meals. Turn your passion into a career. Join our elite caregiver training program and transform your compassion into a healthcare career. So those it's talking directly to people who uh, think that, uh, think that, Play, that being a caregiver is playing cards with grandma. And that's okay. You need to educate them. They're in the market. They want to work. You, they just need help getting an, an understanding of what it is to be a caregiver. Um, and your process can help do that, right? Um, which I know I'm talking a lot about the process. I, 
I promise I'm getting there next. Okay, so the next one is you love being a caregiver and you want it to fit into your schedule better. Apply today and learn about our flexible shifts and how we can help grow, uh, how, how we help grow, care, care, how our caregivers grow their careers. Oh my gosh, I can't read apparently. Um, but again, we know that the number one thing people want is flexible schedules. Um, and there, I know this is not always the easiest thing to solve at a home care agency because like scheduling in our business is like extremely tough. There are solutions though. A lot of agencies I know have a float pool. They incentivize filling in shifts for other people um, and go out of their way to make that happen because they know that that's one of the things the caregivers want. Um, they need to be able to, if you know, they're the primary caregiver at home, they probably need to go pick up their kids when they're sick at school. Stuff happens, right? So as long as you have some way, some mechanism in your business to support that idea, um, then you should be marketing to those people because that's the vast majority of, of what, um, what applicants want today in terms of benefits. Um, okay, and then last but not least, looking to start your healthcare career and want to work and need to work close to home, we got you covered. Join our elite caregiver training program, get matched with amazing clients near you. So it's just focusing on the fact that ultimately, you know, they want an easy commute and it's one of the most challenging things to solve for in this whole puzzle um, because most caregivers just apply to the wrong locations. They apply to the wrong jobs um, in terms of the location. Um, so those are some headline examples. I hope that's helpful. And um, it's a very data-driven way to promote to caregivers based on who you know is applying and like who is literally in the market and available um, to be able to capture and then further qualify, which is the process, right? So uh, marketing at the marketing level, we're trying to capture as many possible people uh, as we can. And then once we start to get into the marketing process, that's where we're going to start to like weed people out. That's the point where it makes sense to start weeding people out because um, uh, you uh, at this point should have enough information about who they are um, to, uh, to start making some real decisions about how they can fit in with the different programs and processes that you have at your business. Like, are they a good candidate for your training program? Are they not? Um, so, okay. So what is your process from job ad to hire? Your marketing process applied to caregiver recruitment refers to the whole candidate journey from seeing your job ad to booking an interview, to talking with your HR team and getting hired. And what I'm going to say is that your process today is more important than it ever has been in the history of caregiver recruitment. I think if you talk to anybody in this industry right now, they would say, wow, caregiver recruiting is so hard and different than it ever has been before. I mean, I think a lot of people chalk it up to the uh, to COVID and how that changed our entire culture. And like, you could get real macro with this. But the data is what's important here. So we know that job seekers today, they're applying to 16 jobs at one time. Um, this is a real stat. Um, so they're uh, on a job board and they are either one click applying for a whole bunch of jobs or they're literally going through and one click applying on 16 different jobs at one time. There are 250 uh, applicants per job opening right now. So it means that there's way more applicants looking for jobs. Um, and at the same time, there's also two open jobs per unemployed person. So that's kind of a confusing thing. Like, how are those two things possible? Well, what we know is that uh, today, basically a lot, there's a ton of applicants looking for jobs but they just keep applying, <laughs> basically. They just keep applying and applying and applying. And, and it's not their fault. It's nobody's fault necessarily. It's just the way of the, that applicants are finding about uh, finding out about jobs today. They get a lot of emails. They get a lot of text messages saying, hey, one click apply, one click apply. And so there, it makes it look like there's a ton of people applying and there's really still a lot of unemployed people. Um, I mean, granted, unemployment's going down, of course, so that's a good thing. But uh, still, there's a ton of job seekers per job uh, when you just look at how many people are applying. And it's not necessarily, it's uh, because of the fact that they just keep applying, basically. So then that kind of begs the question, 
I've got a ton of applicants, right? How do I process them in a way that is actually going to be a good marketing experience for them, right? So what we know is that a typical home care agency today, they are uh, hiring a, a healthcare worker in about 28 days from like seeing the job ad to all the way to being on their first shift. I know it sounds long for a lot of people. 44% of healthcare job seekers say that they are going to ghost if they uh, don't meet, um, uh, if you don't meet their expectations for interview speed. So we know uh, the people who are in the, the market right now, they're applying to a lot of jobs and they're gonna leave the process if it takes too long. Um, on the other hand, we know that from our data in the industry that top companies are uh, taking less than four days to complete an interview and ultimately hire the top percent, the top 10 percent, the best applicants within 10 days. So there in terms of like your marketing aspects and how it relates to the um, uh, process of uh, hiring a caregiver, thinking about the time that it takes in the process is really important because you want to uh, exceed their expectations um, and not allow them to go somewhere else uh, whenever possible. Um, there is a quick question I'm just going to read. Oh, uh, I, I understand now um, what you're, uh, so Kelly has this uh, question uh, for top companies. Does this mean a true interview or a phone screen? So this data that we pulled is based on whatever um, uh, our customer's first interview is. So it is a combination of phone and uh, video and in-person interviews. Um, but the companies that are hiring the most uh, do that first interview within in less than four days. Hopefully that answers the question. Okay, so to use, so basically what we're talking about here is how can you use your hiring process as a part of your marketing process, right? Like this is the experience that somebody's having where it tells them what else they should expect from your company, right? Like it's literally, and um, you walk into, let's say you, you walk into an office for the first time for a job interview and it's a mess, you know, <laughs> like there's like uh, dirty plates all over the office and people are, you know, uh, uh, I don't know what they're doing, um, doing something weird for an office. I don't know. Anyways, it's, it's the, the presentation of what's happening in your hiring process is uh, it, it's the it, it's impacting their experience being marketed to because marketing doesn't just end at they clicked on the job ad. I mean, literally every point in this process is part of marketing to them. It's the experience that you're selling to them that they're going to have with your organization. And so all of it has to be uh, consistent and take the amount of time that is that solves a problem for them. Right, just going back to that same idea. So the reason that it takes so long for most home care agencies today, and obviously uh, very biased here, our, our customers are the exception, of course, but for most home care agencies today, the typical funnel offers like a huge amount of barriers in the process to what you really wanna do is just talk to the person and find out, are they a good human? Like, do they meet my base qualifications? And like, are they reliable and compassionate or are they gonna show up? So, but all the process, all the steps in the process often get in the way of making that personal connection with somebody. Um, so usually what the uh, ex experience is at a home care agency is they see your job ad, they're on Indeed, they're on your website, Google for Jobs, wherever, they hear about it from a friend. They will do some sort of first application. I'm gonna use Indeed as the example, or well, yeah, I'll use Indeed as the example. It's the number one job board they have all the applicants. So they're doing a lot of things right because they certainly know how to get all the applicants on their platform. So um, most of the time what happens is they one-click apply on the job on Indeed or some other job ad. 
then on the recruiter's end, uh, she gets hundreds of applications usually, and then you review them and try and find the people who look decent and then chase some. And then usually what happens is because there wasn't enough information gathered at that first point in the process um, on that first uh, job application, then you kind of go back and say, oh, well, will you fill out this other paperwork for me? So that way I can actually see, do you have a driver's license or do you, you know, do you have any experience in this industry at all? Um, so there's usually some sort of second application step. And then it's kind of back to chasing again to making sure that they do do that interview and uh, and things like that. Um, and then really at that point, when you have that first real conversation with them, you've got enough information in front of you about them. You've finally got them on a Zoom or in person. Then you're really finding out, okay, are you actually qualified for this job um, and have that first interview. So this is just one example. I'm sure each agency is a little bit different in terms of how they uh, set up their processes and how it's all been working for them, but usually it's some combination of this type of workflow. Um, and that takes a really long time. When the applicant is applying to 16 other jobs, part of what your marketing at your hiring process can do is act as marketing to show you're differentiated, to show that you care about the things that they care about, that you are solving their problems and being slow and disorganized is not one of the things that you want to show basically. Right. I mean, it makes sense because um, you want them to be speedy and organized. So you should be speedy and organized. Um, I think I saw somebody's hands come up. So I'm going to see if I can. Find you. Oh, I think the hand went down. So maybe the question was answered. Oh, oh, there we are. Okay, so Betty, I'm gonna uh, allow you to talk. So you should be able to unmute yourself. So hi, um, mm, this is hi. the first time I'm attending your webinar and it seems very informative. I mean, it is very informative. So I had a license for a home health um, care provider services about two years ago mm -hmm. well close to two years yeah and I was just looking at the license now it says that if I do not have patients within a two-year period um, the state will consider my license inactive well yeah I've not had any patients but I'm thinking of you know start uh, marketing myself and um, the only the only issue now I'm thinking is I only have like maybe three weeks and I don't think I'll be able to have a patient, you know, within the next three weeks to prove to the state that um, my license is, you know, I mean, to keep it active. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you're getting my question anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is it has not been active since I had it. And I have a very short time frame to start, you know, looking for patients before, you know, the state can decide on whatever they want to, you know, whatever action needs to be taken since I don't have any patients that I'm actively seeing at this time. Hmm. You know, the license was um was given to me in October um 2022. Mm -hmm. And, you know, per the state of Georgia, I think you have to have some patients at least within a two-year period, you should have, you know, patients to um, show that you are using the license that was provided to you. Gotcha. Now, I don't know what your advice would be in this situation because I have not had any patients and I only have like three more yeah. weeks to go, you know? Yeah, yeah um, that's, that's a tough one. So, I mean, in terms of, like, I guess I don't have any like super uh, uh, great data like in my prepared for today to talk about yes. that yeah because i'm really i'm talking about the caregiver uh, hiring caregivers right but mm -hmm. what i do have i can definitely um refer you to a couple people that i know who are okay uh like who help with sales and marketing for getting clients yes, yes. Uh, for caregivers so mm -hmm. yeah after this i'll follow up with you and shoot you a couple names of people to talk to all right sounds good thank you yeah, yeah for sure thanks for joining yeah. Take you off the screen. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for that question, Betty. That was great. Um uh <laughs> and thanks for the comment, Sarah. Be speedy and organized will now be on the wall of my office. Yeah. Um, I mean, because it's the perception, right? It's like if they perceive that, oh my gosh, this process is complicated 
and like I don't understand what the next steps are then that is presenting the image that uh, other things are going to be difficult and so it's it's about it's that uh, solving their problem and showing them value at the same time okay so um, summary of bottlenecks in your caregiver recruitment process so these are the data points, right? Like this is just what we know. I'm not telling you exactly what solution you need to come up with with this. I'm just saying these are the facts based on all the data that we've collected, 250,000 applicants. Applicants don't usually read the job description. That's just an unfortunate thing. Like you can catch their attention for a few seconds, you know, like get them to read a few words, um, get a general idea. Bullet points are the best, like keep it short and sweet because most of the time they're just not reading the job descriptions. Um, and pretty much everything they're applying for looks the same. If you remember that image I showed you of all these emails from a job board, like there's no, like, if you're not spending a lot of time thoroughly reading every single job post, like there's, you're not, um, you're not getting enough information about the job to know what you applied for, basically. So you saw, um, uh, in my earlier data, the pretty much all agencies today have more than half of their applicants do not live in the right area for where they actually want to hire people, right? So like it, it goes back to them not reading the job description, not really paying attention to what they're applying for. Um, most agencies today, and I'm sure there are exceptions on, in this group today, but um, uh, most agencies today take too long to get back to an applicant for an interview, just even for an interview. Um, there are probably too many steps in the process for an applicant at the top of the funnel before the qualified applicant has a real conversation with the recruiter or the HR team. Um, it's that experience that they're having of like, wow, I'm walking into a messy office, right? Like they need to walk into a super slick office um, and they'll think, oh, wow, well, I want, not only do I want this job, like this is like a legitimate opportunity for me, which gets to my next point. Okay, so physical evidence. This is going back to one of the seven Ps, right? So physical evidence is what your app applicant actually sees to prove that this is a legitimate solution to their problem. Basically, it's answering the question, are you really going to deliver what you promised in your job ad or wherever they learned about this job? So some recommendations based on what we've learned about applicants, like, for instance, the fact that we have data from 250,000 people who are interested in caregiving jobs that literally means we understand some of the things that they that resonate with them right so one of the things that we know is that applicants whenever possible try and keep job descriptions uh short um and show especially on your website you have a lot of opportunity there show people in pictures and with maps um what they're applying for. So it's literally this process of like making people see what they're applying for, not just read it, right? So it's physical evidence to them of like, oh, wow, this list, I, I'm, I'm looking at a picture of caregivers on your team. Um, and wow, these look like smiling, happy faces. Like these are people who look like me, who I want to work with. Um, or literally seeing on a map where they're going to be working. Um, that's another way to do it. But it's literally physical evidence. It's things that they can see to demonstrate that like you're real, basically. Um, track how long it takes to get interviews completed. Less than four days is going to put you ahead of your competition for the most part. Um, don't get lengthy applications before your first interview with them. Focus on the personal connection because there's so many, they get so many messages, like it's it's wild, right? So if you spend your most of your time focusing on connecting with great potential caregivers, um, that's going to have your biggest benefit. I know that the reason why a lot of people want to get so much information up front from a caregiver is because they don't want to waste their time on that. But there is a happy medium there. And that's actually where Augusta comes in. So feel free to uh, come and learn about Augusta after this if you're not already familiar with us. But um, there is a way where you can get enough information from an applicant to know whether or not you should have that conversation with them, but also not overwhelm them. Um, that's the real balance here. And it's meeting their, it's solving their problem of doing this quickly and, um, and at a job that they're interested in learning about, right? But, um, okay. And then prioritize selling the job to the widest number of people who are qualified at the lowest acceptable level, and you will weed out process, people in your process after. Um, so like I said, the 
if you were to take away one thing from this today, you just know, and it's, I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying you, you should know that if you post a job saying experienced caregivers only, or that is the first thing that you vet an applicant on, whether or not they have experience, you have cut out a big part of who's actually applying to these jobs today. So again, it's up to you whether or not you do it. Um, it's a different hiring strategy, right? But like that, that is the downside of um, if you, if you're marketing to caregivers, your job ads and the way you position it on your website sounds narrow to them and it cuts people out, that literally means that they're, they're, they're opting out. They're not going to apply for those jobs because they don't think they're for them. Right. But we all know there are great caregivers who are brand new to the industry and you can train them. So that's what I'll leave you with on our process recommendations. Um, so that's uh, I'm, I'm wrapping up now and all my data on how to market to caregivers. And uh, I hope that was really helpful to you. If you want to stay around here for five more minutes, I'll give you a quick tour of Augusta and show you a little bit about what we do. Okay, so Augusta is the first caregiver applicant matching system built just for home care agencies. So uh, I like to say we don't do anything else with our lives. And that is true. So we only work with home care agencies. Every piece of software that we built is specific to home care. What is really unique about our company is that we did develop this way that I think nobody else has done to be able to understand and get enough information from applicants to determine at a base level, or do they rank for this job? So we uh, have a ranking system, which basically grades your applicants based on the quality uh, matching what you're looking for and the problems that you need solved. Um, and using this big data set, we are able to help our customers personalize their recruitment workflow at scale. And we're doing it 24 hours a day. So even when you're off work, we are still capturing your applicants and making sure that they understand what they're applying for and are getting teed up for your recruitment team. So um, the ROI that most of our customers get from us is more interviews, a lot more interviews booked and billable hours. And the billable hours piece is really because we help you make matches, not just with your applicants today for your clients today. We're, since we get this standard data set on every applicant, it helps you make matches in the future, right? Next week, when you get a random new case who needs a bilingual caregiver, you can go into Augusta and say, okay, where are my Spanish speaking caregivers that applied to my company six months ago? I'm gonna go call them back, right? Um, because that's a very differentiated way of uh, uh, building a relationship with a caregiver, right? So, um, okay, so that's the overview of Augusta. The way it actually works in practice is that the caregiver thinks that our software is an application for the job. So they click on your, uh, we're integrated with Indeed and other job boards. So you, they click on your ad on Indeed. And they think, okay, I'm going to make this cool little application for being a caregiver at this agency. And as they fill it out, we actually tell them personal information to them as they apply of why they could be a good fit. Um, so we're not telling them they got the job or anything, but we're telling them, hey, did you know you're only five minutes away from this agency when they put in a zip code that's in a good location? So it's really basic stuff. But as you saw in our data, even just solving for the location piece of making sure that the caregiver understands, oh yeah, I found an agency that is actually close by or I found the service area that's gonna be a good fit for me. Helping them understand that piece alone is like gets you so many more applicants, right? That are potentially qualified for your agency. So we help them understand where they're applying to. And then in 60 seconds, we've gathered enough information from them to grade them and give them the opportunity to self-schedule. So that's this little image that you're seeing here where as soon as we know they're qualified, they see the opportunity to schedule an interview and that gets connected with your calendar, really cool little system. And so that way all the qualified, appoint qualified applicants just automatically schedule interviews with you. Um, it helps you connect with the right caregivers. And then on the uh, management side, we help you get more client matches because of this data set that we've gathered. So it's a couple of big things. We help you understand why applicants are not qualified for your job. So we're, when we rule somebody out, 
we aggregate that information for you so that way you can see, oh, there's a ton of people who applied to my job who seem good, they're qualified, except the fact that they're not certified in my state. So do I want to try and help people get certified? Because I know that information. If you don't know that information, then it's a huge risk, right? To say, oh, I'm going to try and help people get certified, right? Like that, it, it, it's, it feels like a really big risk. But if you have the data proving, you know what, there's a hundred more people in my service area who I could, who could, in theory, I could have hired if they were also HCA registered. That's probably worth dedicating some resources to as a company, right? So part of what we do is we help give you that actionable data that helps transform your recruitment into what will actually capture the people in the market. Um, and then all of this data, hyper searchable and uh, reusable. So we help you remarket to the right people at the right time um, by uh, in like probably the simplest way possible. Um, so that's the idea behind Augusta. If you'd like to learn more about it, just uh, come reach out to me, uh, check out our website and go uh, to the book a demo page and uh, just schedule a time for a demo and you'll talk with me um, uh, or feel free to give me an email or, or shoot me an email or give me a call. And I'm happy to talk with you more about this. I'd certainly love to learn about your agency and see where we might be able to be helpful to you. So with that, I'm going to wrap up today um, and say thanks so much for joining. This was recorded, so I will have it up on our website in a couple of days, um, and I'll email it out to everybody. And um, I guess that's it for now. So have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. Thanks.